All right, hello everybody. My name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer. I am a psychologist. Today we're gonna to talk about the way we are meant to operate, the way, the way, just like, look, if I take this bracelet and I drop it, there's gravity. There is a way that we were created to operate the way <clears throat> that we operate best. And yet, <clears throat> excuse me, for us, there's free will that's involved, right? And so you want, we want to, right? I want to, as a, as a person, as a person that has studied this for, for 30 years, right? Working with clients and then in school before that, um, I want to have the highest level of consciousness and I want to teach people how to do that. I want you to be equipped. I don't want you to be in the dark. I want you to know how to love well. And if there are organizations that came in to, um, for whatever reason, keep us busy so that we're not present, keep us overworked so that we don't meditate, so that you don't do inner work, so that you don't know what's, what's driving you, so that you're just run here and there and everywhere by triggers, right? So um, wh what I was inspired to do this past week was to start reading C.S. Lewis's book. Now, C.S. Lewis uh, had a photographic memory. and was an Oxford professor and was like best friends with Tolkien. Tolkien knew like 50 languages I, I heard um, fluently, right? At least, at least 20. This guy that taught our C.S. Lewis class said 50 that he had heard, but... So... C.S. Lewis was very well read and he was an atheist until he was about 33 and then came back to Christianity. Now, I'm not saying at all that you have to be Christian. I welcome all people. I want all of us to know how the human being operates and how you operate best. And so what I was reading, what I was called to go back and read, and I only had it in this big book. I didn't want to go buy a new book because I already had it in here was um, Mere Christianity. And so this is the chapter on social morality. But um, in this book, C.S. Lewis puts it so clearly and concise, so succinctly, but how just like gravity, there's there are ways that we are meant to operate. And, and it's kind of like in our society, our, our society will say, uh, oh, you can do whatever you want. And, you know, but as soon as someone does that thing to you, then you get all mad and you're like, no, you can't do that though. And then it's like, well, if someone else can't do that to you, then you know you ought not to do that to somebody else, right? And so we have a moral law within ourselves that we're aware of. And when, and unless you're a sociopath, you know, you're aware when you cross those boundaries and you're aware, you know, by the hurt it causes other people and by the hurt that other people feel. Now, we can all have triggers from the past that can, um, again, I use, I use this picture, right? If, if everybody knew this picture, the world would be like such a better place, right? If you understood what I'm drawing here, okay? Now understand this is what operates and go and test this otherwise. This is just what, what I know from what I've studied and what I've seen, all right? And so, Uh, and drew that okay all right so event okay so I'll, i'm gonna draw hearts and pluses in here for and a dove but i draw a, a, okay. what i draw is and this is important all right baggage okay wow this is this is how you understand the ego in one one quick second is look and so some kind of event <clears throat> some kind of event happens some someone triggers you in some way someone says um i use the example of no i'm not going to take out the trash you know if like one of my kids talked back to me in this way right and i could get triggered because there was so much trash 
you know, unconscious material in my childhood that my parents didn't take self-responsibility for or whatever that I felt like got thrown onto me. And so this is our baggage. Here's our, here's our, I'll just put like inner work. This is how you measure this, right? Inner work. Um, I just wrote this quote down. Oh, it's on this page before this, right? Two pages before. A scientist, right? Oh, maybe that's the song. Maybe that's the song. I was waiting for the song to show up. There's a song called Scientist by Coldplay, and there's a woman who sings it. Yeah. All right. It's it, and she says, "Let's go back to." Well, she. I have a, this woman that's singing it, because I heard it in in Ephesus when I was in Turkey. Let's go back to the start. Hmm. Anyway, um, I was getting this other Jonas Brothers song too called "Believe." So. I, I, I want to make notes and, and add them somewhere so that I can show you how these songs will teach these truths. So I'll write down the scientists and believe. Um, and I'll make a way to make the notes for us. I'll do that, okay? Um, but, it, but, okay, so C.S. Lewis says, I'm going to quote from C.S. Lewis, every scientific statement in the long run, however complicated it looks, this is from Mere Christianity, really is means something like this. I pointed the telescope to such and such a part of the sky at 2.20 a.m. on January 15th and I saw so-and-so or I put some of the stuff in a pot and I heated it to such and such a temperature and it did so-and-so, okay? And he says, um, this is the job of science and a very useful and necessary job it is too. But why anything comes to be there at all and whether there is anything behind the things science observes, something of a different kind, this is not a scientific question, right? And so I have this understanding that we all come from God. We all come from divine love. We all come from the same creator. That's why I'm like, you're totally welcome to be here because if a creator created us, then there is a way that we're meant to operate. Okay, so I do this sometimes. Like, I, I here's my leg, right? I don't say, I don't say, look, my leg is free. If it could go 360 degrees, it, it works best, like right when I'm running and exercising to do that, you know, I'm always like, like there's, I, they say not to flex, but I think, I think it's important. I lost a ton of uh, sizes. And so I, 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 one of the ways to operate is to take care of your body and build muscle and, and be lean. Now, not, not for all people, but to 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 walk to to um wake up both sides of your body to calm yourself down you know by doing muscle resistant anyway i'm not i'm not a medical doctor so i'm not saying to do any of that stuff without talking to your medical doctor okay now what happens understand this this is how we operate so this is this is science i do the science of psychology this is what i've noticed and what what's in all the books that i studied in graduate school right i mean i'm just saying it in a different way a lot of it's in a book called keeping the love you find by harville hendrix and so okay so here's something that happens like someone says um you're a horrible person all right and we don't love you right um when they say that, it taps into all of the times other people and society and your childhood and your parents got that internalized to them. And so it, it triggers all this baggage, this unconscious baggage, all right? Now, when you do the inner work, that makes more you more and more conscious. So let's just say you did therapy or you learned how to become aware or you learned how to become in the present moment, not entangled by your egotism. Eckhart Tolle will call this your pain body got activated. And so he'll say that in the power in the book, The Power of Now, that, um, and, and Dr. Joe Dispenza in Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself talks about, we go to the same reaction every time and then we produce the same neurochemicals and then our body gets addicted to, to certain neurochemicals that we keep, like if we feel, okay, if, if you don't feel confident in life, let's say, right?
but you feel really confident in a video game. This is why people go back to video games because they're like, they get the endorphins of like, oh, I'm really playing this video game well, well, but they're running away from real life, right? And so understand it that way, conceptually, this is just coming to me now, is that um, when, when, sorry, I was thinking of the lyrics of the scientist and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Uh, when you go back to, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say, Dr. Joe Dispenza was talking about. Um, and this isn't a video, I, I remixed a, a minute of this video, you ought to watch. Go in my shorts on YouTube and look for the video with Dr. Joe on it. This is the only one I have of him so far. It's Jay Shetty doing an interview with Dr. Joe Dispenza and he's talking about 95% of the time we make the same choices with the same chemicals and I put captions up on so you can understand. I described the whole thing. I ought to have just printed that out for us. That would be great. And that can be another video, right? But basically he's saying that if you were always, let's say, put down or kicked around or felt rejected in some way or another in childhood, you got used to feeling that feeling. And so even though it's not a good feeling, it's a crappy feeling, if you want to, um, that's a psychological term, right? Um, we go back to that feeling because we're used to navigating through that feeling state, right? And so it's not like you want to. It's not like when people come in my office, they say, I want to throw up my food, but they are throwing up their food or they're starving themselves. Or, you know, I've worked with eating disorders before, or I keep going back to this heavy depression. Well, look, okay, so let's go back to this thing. When you do the inner work, that's what I was going to draw. Let's say you have done, you learn how to become really aware and are aware of your baggage. When I'm aware that my kids are triggering me that I'm like oh hey look I'm feeling really triggered I don't want to react right now because what you're going to think what you always think and this is look at in every relationship right with yourself as well and relationship with other people you can trigger yourself when when your spouse does something it triggers all the other times you felt that horrible way right that's why you'll have your perfect storm that keeps happening you know or like I know this person that keeps showing up, um, like showing, I don't want to, I don't want to reveal this person's thing. So I'm trying to disguise it. Let me think. Like if you're in a meeting and there's supposed to be a speaker there, this is probably revealing of myself, but we can use it. I don't mind. And there's supposed to be a speaker there, but then someone else keeps, now it's like Zoom etiquette, right? There's someone else keeps showing up on the screen when their camera's meant to be shut off. And it's like understanding, you know, I want to go back and look at why is that triggering me that that person um, is is doing that. I, obviously, there's a story. So what what you have is a story starts coming in. It, it has to have something to do with my child. It always does. Right. And so it's just like that. Something will happen. You know, the kids no, I'm not going to take the trash out or they leave their trash all over the floor, let's say. That triggers all the time your parents, you know, didn't deal with their inner work and yelled at you and you felt like an idiot as a child or you felt shamed or you felt rejected or left out or excluded or whatever it is. This act right here might be something totally benign. It might be like, you know, um, I used to use the example of a kid, your kid not studying for a test, you know, and it's like, and it's like, you put all of this, you're never gonna get into college. How could you not do that? You're just acting dumb and you're not dumb. And it's just like, hello, it's tapping into all of your feelings of shame of not living to your fullest potential or whatever, but it's easier to just yell at the kid instead of recognize your baggage, right? The more you do the inner work and you have awareness, this turns into hearts and pluses and I do, I do like a seagull, like for the Holy Spirit, you know, it's like God can transform you and grace is allowed for everybody here, just like the sun shines on everybody. And so um, this can transform you so that, look, if two people are operating like this, you're triggering them, they're triggering you, then just imagine two people throwing their baggage. Now, the more you get conscious, the more when you're arguing with someone, you're like, hey, I'm going to take five minutes to just regulator I'm going to take 10 minutes or I'm going to take a week before I re write back this email because 
you know, you start noticing your own stuff and what that is and not projecting it all on the other person. It makes the relationship really heavy when you blame them for all your stuff because you haven't done the inner work. All right, so um, I'm gonna keep doing this teaching for uh, the rest of this hour. And so if you want it, go on my other site. Uh, I'll keep talking about it right here for another minute. I can do, it's, it breaks off at 15 for Instagram right now, but on YouTube, I'll explain a little bit more is, um, what I'm going to be doing is elaborating on this concept. I have over a thousand videos now on YouTube that are free, so you're welcome to go. And I recommend studying those, listening to those, find the titles that resonate with you. And, and, and it doesn't matter which videos you have of mine. It really doesn't because I'm teaching you. What C.S. Lewis was talking about is we operate in certain ways. Now, there are ways in our society where we've been thrown off those ways of operating we've been talked into doing less ways or we're stressed out all the time so you don't realize what it was like oh why would I do therapy why would I um read the scriptures why would I calm down in my life why would I pray you know you've got to pray just to make it today right that's MC Hammer all right why would I do that why would I get my mind back online so I can be connected to to divine love to, to the most high to, to God um, people don't realize why they would do that and yet they like being around people that have done the work right we like being around people that don't get triggered that don't put all their stuff on us and so why not be that be the change you wish to see those in this world and so and so you're worth the investment I'm, I'm having, I'm, I'm um, putting this at a certain price for now, really, really low. And then after the new year, I'm going to raise it up. I plan to, that's what I plan to do, you know. Um, so if you'd like more, then continue on. And for the rest of us, we're going to continue on right now. All right, so I'm just going to write 16. All right, so welcome to the second part 